Hi, I'm Alex and I will show you how a commercial jellyfish farm looks like. Let's go! Welcome to the jellyfish farm. We are a German-based aquaculture company focusing on jellyfish. Our main customers are public aquariums, wholesalers or even private people. Maybe in the future also restaurants or the cosmetic industry. So we are here at our largest grow out system. It has about 6,000 liters and contains mostly the jellyfish from 2 to 3 centimeter up to 10, 15 centimeters and then they go out to public aquaria. But we also have different systems for very small jellyfish and yeah of course all jellyfish need a lot of food and every day so let's have a look at the Atemia breeding station. So we are here at our breeding station for the baby prime shrimps and this is the food what the jellyfish get once or twice daily and it's really important to have them yeah one or two days after hatch and also to enrich them. You can use different enrichments but we use mostly fresh algae or dry algae to enrich them. Yeah, we are here at one of our breeding tables and this one is mainly for moon jellies. It's now at 18 degrees and the salinity is about 30 ppm. And as you can see there's many hoses and pipes and I think this is why we call it a jellyfish lab. Yeah? And we have here different tanks. The ones for the Ephira, for the smallest ones. So these are maybe two, three days old. And with five to ten millimeters they can go in these grow out tanks. They are more U-shaped and I think it's a, it's a good tank to grow the jellies to two, three centimeters. And these moon jellies are about two weeks old, so they grow very fast, about one to two centimeters a week. Yeah, we are here at our older system. It's a tropical system with several different jellyfish species. We have here Australian spotted jellyfish, upside down jellyfish, fried eggs, and cannonball jellyfish. And they all match the same water parameters. It's about 24C and yeah, 30 to 35 um, salinity. It's quite challenging to hit exactly the parameters what they need, but yeah, as you can see, it works. So our goal in the future is to have separate systems for every species. I think it's easier to control and yeah, easier to work with. So here, this system was um, first built six months ago and it was a really big challenge to keep all small containers with polyps and jellyfish together in the system. But we got these whole rooms, um, I think late 2020, and since then we are constantly setting up new systems. And at the end it will be about 14 in total with 25,000 liters. And our goal is to breed about 20 species um, next year. So we are now back at our large grow out system where you can see two different types of jellyfish tanks. It's the true chrysal and the semi chrysal. Both designs are coming from ourselves and we use this chrysal for many different species of jellyfish. So here we have it in low density. This is to get the highest quality out of these Japanese sea nettles because they are for public aquaria and wholesalers. If we go for mass production we can yeah, higher the density, so up to 200 jellies in one tank to produce about 200 to 300 kilograms jellyfish mass in a month. Yeah, when it comes to mass production, it's very important to have enough polyps. And especially the moon jellies are quite easy to breed and they give a lot of polyps. And you can just collect them at the acrylic sheets like here. And also I find a lot of polyps at the outlet of the tank so it's a good idea to have some acrylic parts or PVC pipes in your outlet which you can just take off and use these polyps um, to breed the next batch. Yeah we are now coming to the end and I hope you got some nice impressions how a jellyfish farm could look like and yeah this was just the basement 
and I hope next year, mid of next year, we should be ready with the first floor and maybe then we can meet us personally here in the farm. Bye!